Welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be adapting this Nighthawk Pro 280 model. Now we've already done a video on this great little model where we actually took it out of the packet, we set it up, we balanced the props, popped everything on and took it out for a flight. And that we were able to do that because this is the ready to fly version and it came with its own radio. Now I've been flying this for a little while and it's been great but I want to convert it from the radio that came with the kit to my Tyrannus radio. So it's worthwhile just making a little video to explain the options for doing that. So if you've bought the ready to fly kit and you want to do the conversion and put it on an existing radio that you already have or you've bought the ready to fly kit and you're getting more into RC and you've invested in a computer radio from Futaba, Spectrum, a Tyrannus or whatever then you can swap it over as well. And also this model is available in a standalone version where it doesn't come with a radio receiver at all. So everything we're going to go through in here is also going to be useful for those of you that just have the model and need to connect and bind it and set it up on your computer radio. So the first things we're going to have a look at is how it's connected right now. Then we'll have a look at the options for actually connecting it up to a radio receiver. We have two. We have something called P. WM, where uh, we actually connect each of the channels individually, very similar to the way it's set up now, or you can connect it using something called PPM, where you can have all of the channels coming out of just three pins, a positive, negative voltage, and also your signal. So we'll do both of those and we'll set them up. Then we'll also just have a little look about some of the best practice when you're setting up your radio to make sure that the model is entirely happy. Thank you to Gearbest before we get into the details of this. Uh, this is a model that came from Gearbest, so thank you to those guys for sending us this to try. Um, the link in the description is for the ready to fly kit that comes with the radio, but from there you'll also be able to find the versions because uh, they also stock the ones where it's just on its own and they also have the spares as well. So let's take a look at how the receiver is actually wired up right now. The receiver itself plugs in using an 8-pin cable into this connector at the side. And uh, it goes through this in the manual, and we'll look at that in a second, but it kind of goes the um, ground and plus 5 volts, and then each of the signals in turn. That is a cable which comes out and then actually plugs into the radio receiver, which is this little black box here. And here's all the cables plugged in side by side. And there it goes uh, via that braiding underneath to that little connector we've just seen. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just disconnect this. It's just held on by a cable tie. So we're just gonna have to snip through that at the bottom. And there's also a little cable tie here at the side that's holding the aerial on along the side of the frame. We'll clip that off too and we'll be able to remove the entire thing. The nice thing is that in the actual kit itself, you do get an antenna mount, which for those of you that do use these style receivers with big, long, whippy aerials is great because it's going to allow us to mount it and keep those long, whippy aerials away from the props. So let me just pause the video here. I'm going to remove this radio and um, I'll actually unplug the cable and we'll come back and have a look at how it's actually connected. So here's the receiver actually taken out of the model. So there's the connector at one end and here's all the wires going in the other. Now one of the things you'll notice is on this receiver it says channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And um, actually if we put up a diagram here you'll see that in the manual it um, kind of shows that the way it works is it's supposed to plug into aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder. Now this sometimes confuses people. This is because for computer radios where you can actually change where each of the channels connect to. So the aileron could be on channel one, two, three, four, five. You decide that. That's a classic way of denoting which channel is which. So for example, if we look at something like an 8XR, you have the same kind of uh, notation. So the trick with that is to make sure that if the aileron is connecting to channel one, then you're plugging in the cable that's expecting to talk to the aileron into channel one as well. Or if you're using something like Spectrum or some of the others, you actually see on their receivers, you actually have each of the channels written on because uh, typically you can't move those channels around. So throttle, aileron, elevator, etc. So if we just look 
at the diagram of how that cable is actually wired up. You can see here that the first cable that actually has all three wires on is expecting to plug into the aileron channel, then the white cable goes into elevator, the single black cable goes into throttle, the single red cable goes into rudder, and then the single white and orange cables goes into AUX1 and AUX2. If we just jump back onto the desk, you can actually see that's how this is wired. So here we have the first connector that has all three connectors. So we have the plus five volts in the ground and also the signal. That's going to be the aileron. Then the white is going to be the elevator. Then the black is going to be throttle. Brown's going to be rudder. And these last two is the auxiliaries one and two. So if we just go back to that diagram, if you're going to connect up your new receiver, then what you need to do is just unhook the cables if you have the ready to fly version or just follow this wiring diagram to plug each of the cables into the corresponding inputs. That's all you have to do because the software by default is set up to use PWM which is what we're doing here and you, all you have to do then is the final step which is just make sure that your endpoints and your trims and everything okay but we'll talk about that when we've talked about PPM. There is another way that you can connect this too. The other way is using a single cable just connecting into that first three wire cable here. So just connecting that up to the receiver. This is called PPM. And PPM is a way to send all of the signals down one individual wire into the receiver. And that's actually the way I'm going to have it plugged in here. So I'm going to connect this up so that I just have the one set of wires going down to the receiver. I'm actually going to remove all the other wires just to make it super smooth. I'm also going to pop the antenna holder together so that I can thread these two whippy aerials through. And then we're going to connect it back up to the computer. Because one of the things we're going to have to do is tell the model that we're using PPM, i.e. just the one cable, rather than PWM like this, where all we've done is just changed out the receiver and plugged it in just the way it is here, but to a new radio receiver like this. So let me just set that up and come back and show you what it looks like installed on the model. So again, all I'm going to do is just plug that first cable in that has three wires, the brown, red, and orange into the PPM out connection of whatever receiver I'm going to be using. I'm going to get rid of the other wires and I'm going to plug it all back together and we'll come back and have a look. So installed it starts to look a little bit more like an insect with this kind of receiver that I'm using. Here are the two aerials stuck out the front in that aerial holder that you get with the kit. Now if I actually show you the side where the cable is plugged in. You can see I've actually moved all the other cables just to keep it nice and neat. Dead easy to do that. You just use a pin to lift up the little lips um, that are actually part of the connector and you can just draw each of the cables out. Those three cables goes up and into the new receiver which is here. Just that one single three wires doing everything and the aerials then go up into these aerials at the top. We're going to have to plug this back into a PC now and just double check that we have everything set up properly. By this point, I'd expect that you've created a new quadcopter model on your radio and you have assigned all the channels and set it up. So what we need to do is use the software to do two things. One, I need to tell Baseflight that this is going to be running as a PPM receiver because it was PWM before, if you remember. And secondly, we're also going to check two things. One, that the middle channel values is 1500 because that's what the receiver is expecting to see when there's no control input. And the second is that the channel values don't go above 2000 and below 1000. Now, most radios will do that by default. The Tyrannus uh, likes to go a little bit further than that and sometimes that can upset things like base flight and clean flight. So let's connect this up to the computer and have a look. So the first thing you need to do if you haven't done already is actually to download Baseflight and install it on your computer. Now what you need to do to do that is to open Google Chrome and then find the App Store and then in the App Store search for Baseflight Configurator. You can see on the right hand side mine says rate it because I've already downloaded it. Once you've downloaded it, you'll find you get a new icon on the desktop, which looks like this. It's like a square with lots of little dots in it. If you double click on that, it'll show you all the pieces you've downloaded. So here is all of my Google apps. I'm going to start Baseflight. 
Now, before we start base flight, it's a good idea to make sure that you've removed the props from your model. You are going to have to power it from the flight battery so that uh, we can actually get a connection to the radio so that the receiver is connected. And because we're not sure how everything is set up, it's absolutely imperative that you remove the props. That way, if something happens that you're not expecting, you don't have an angry 280 class quad bouncing around the room. So, get props off, power it from the flight battery, and then start base flight. Once base flight has started, then we're going to plug in the USB cable. So let me do that now here with this model that I've got. And I've got my radio turned on as well that I've got with a model set up. So here we are connecting. Now the first thing I want to do in here is obviously going to be to set the receiver to be PPM. If I go into the receiver right now, what you'll find is that you'll you'll find that this um, the roll channel is uh, is kind of the only one that's getting any signal, and that's because at the moment it's PWM and it isn't expecting to listen to all the bits and pieces one after the other. So I'm going to go into configuration, and again you wouldn't have to do this step if you're still using PWM, but I'm not. So I'm going to enable PPM input. Scroll down to the bottom, click save, it'll reboot. Once it's rebooted, if I go into the receiver, then hopefully we can see all the channels moving. Now the trick here is that then we need to check that each of the channels that we've got is actually set up the right way. Now if it's PWM where you have all the cables plugged in and you move one of the controls on the radio and the corresponding control isn't moving on the screen, that means you've probably plugged the cable into the wrong output on the receiver and you can just swap them around. If it is PPM like this and you're moving the control and the wrong control is moving here, then you can either change the channel map which will actually um, change the order that it thinks the bits and pieces is being received in, or you can actually, if it's a computerized radio, just change everything around. Now what I will do is I am going to make available the model that I'm actually using here on my Tyrannus radio, and I'll put a link in the description if you'd like to download the one that I've actually set up. So here's my throttle, that's working perfectly. Here's my rudder, yaw is working perfectly. Elevator or pitch, great. Rolls working fantastic too. And hopefully, Horizon mode. Rate mode active. Horizon mode. Angle mode. the auxiliary one is working as well. So let me just go into mode. And um, if I click the mode switch, there we go, that's all working too. So the only last thing I would suggest is, at the moment you can see that some of these numbers aren't exactly 1500. When the controls aren't being moved at all, then what you really want is for them, them to settle as close to 1500 as you possibly can. That's what the flight control board thinks is level and safe. So you can use your sub trims in your menu on the radio to set that up and also make sure that the values of the channels don't go above 2000 so there that one goes to 1993 and doesn't go below 1000 mine goes down to 1013 1014 and the way to do that is using the end points on your radio or on something like a Tyrannus you can use the servo menu to actually make sure that it doesn't overdrive it so that all looks absolutely fantastic. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to disconnect and save it. And now we have everything connected and we've done the conversion to the radio of our choice. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.